guys, my name is Hilo. And my name is Alexa, and we're here to talk to you about an important issue, sexual assault. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and us, your friends here at Student Language Mediation, have dedicated our time to spreading the message. As the month comes to a close, we would like to address some concerns that are common among survivors of sexual assault. These include what to do immediately following a sexual assault and informing the police. Before we begin, we would like to say that the survivor is never ever at blame, even if the attacker was a stranger or someone they had known for years, or if they had been sexually intimate in the past. Or if they were drinking or using drugs, or if they were wearing clothes that may have been viewed as seductive, if they froze and could not say no, and if they were physically unable to fight back. First, you must take these steps if you have been assaulted. Get away from the attacker and find a safe place. Call 911 as soon as possible. Remember that it's never too late to file a case with the police. However, keep in mind that the sooner you report your case, the sooner the police can gather any evidence that will help track down your assailant. Also keep in mind that police officers usually have received training in helping sexual assault survivors. The next step you want to do is call someone you know or a national hotline such as the National Sexual Assault Hotline at 1-800-656-HOPE or 4673. You may also bring a friend or a family member for support if you need to when filing a report with the police. Also remember to preserve evidence. Do not clean any part of your body or comb your hair. Also, do not you change your clothes and avoid messing with anything at the crime scene. Go to the nearest hospital or emergency room right away to be examined and treated for injuries you may not even know you have. You may also want to ask to be treated for STIs or contraception for, pre for an unwanted pregnancy. The hospital can also help you in collecting any saliva, semen, hair, or clothing fiber that the assailant may have left behind. The next thing you want to do is discuss filing a police report. If you are unsure whether or not you want to file, please ask the hospital staff to collect evidence without filing a report. If you want to file in the future, the information will be there for you and it is best to collect the evidence as soon as possible. I also had the pleasure of speaking with Officer Joe Thornton, an experienced police officer with the Sam Houston State University Police Department. He has provided us with a wealth of information to share with everyone. Officer Thornton advised that when filing a report of sexual assault, approaching a Capri Security Authority or co contacting the Title IX Coordinator is the best course of action. He also emphasized the wide variety of resources available to sexual assault survivors on campus. Some of these include the Dean of Students Office, Title IX, and the Counseling Center. You could also contact UPD or the Safe House located on Sam Ave. We at Student Legal Mediation may also be available to help you if your assailant is not a Sam student or if you're unsure if he or she is not a Sam student. I also asked Officer Thornton to explain the difference between filing a police report and choosing to prosecute. He explained to us that filing a report does not immediately lead to prosecution. Prosecution is always the survivor's choice. Finally, Officer Thornton shared a very important message with me that I am now sharing with everyone. First, we must learn how to identify the behaviors of a sexual predator. You have to trust your instincts and if someone's behavior is raising red flags, avoid that person. There's probably a reason for it. Secondly, if you see a sexual assault taking place, please intervene. No one should have to go through such a traumatic experience and if you were in that person's shoes, you would want someone to intervene on your behalf. Lastly, most schools leave it up to parents to teach their kids about the nature of sexual assault and how to spot the bad guys. However, what most schools aren't aware of is that parents aren't fully aware of what sexual assault entails. So, Officer Thornton advises that it must be the school's responsibility to educate kids. Start early. Teach them how to spot the bad guys. Thank you for tuning in to listen to this message, and we would like to thank Officer Thornton for sharing his advice. If you would like to see more blogs from us, please visit us at bearcatlaw.com. For more information about your legal rights and your legal options, come visit us in the LSC at room 330 or give us a call at 936 2941717 email us at slms@shsu.edu at be, be safe and have a wonderful day <laughs> again <laughs>